Hey guys, I'm back! Uh, it's been a while since my last core video, hasn't it? I know I don't put videos out as often as the big guys, but I still want to thank you all for sticking with me. Well, hopefully I'm gonna make up for it by talking about something that you might have began to find nostalgic over the past few years. As you can see, I am definitely the real AK and not just a me impersonating as him. Ah! <laughs> Launch titles for a system often share a certain quality, in that while they may not have a deep gameplay focus compared to later games in the system's life, particularly if they're mini-game compilations, they still provide many lasting memories for those who grew up with the system. Even 14 years on, people who grew up with Wii Sports still remember it fondly. Rolling the bowling ball backwards is like a shared experience. And people were kinda disappointed when Battle Tanks and Clubhouse games on the Switch wasn't exactly a replica of tanks from Wii Play. Yeah, that's kind of a bummer, but hey, at least the bowling's still pretty legit. With the 3DS almost approaching 10 years old in age, God, I'm old, I figured that the nostalgia phase for it is about to kick into high gear. Like, you can make 3DS related memes that only certain kinds of people will probably get nowadays. And while I've already made a video on the lackluster launch of the 3DS and how games like Super Mario 3D Land made a great case for one of its major features being the 3D effect, I didn't really touch on the other major selling point of the 3DS that was included with the system. These cards. It's weird that even though these are packaged with every 3DS system even to this day, not a lot of people have been reminiscing about them. Well, I certainly have been, hence this video. For those of you out of the loop, these are cards designed for the augmented reality features of the 3DS. AR would seem like a very simple premise, you just make virtual stuff appear on top of a card. But since its humble beginnings, the tech has evolved to the point where it's actually a fairly common sight in electronics nowadays. Most modern smartphones have some sort of AR-related feature, letting you do stuff like measuring distances in real time or plopping virtual objects in a real-world space, all without any markers. Remember Pokemon Go? Yep, that's a massive boom in consumer use of AR. But back in 2011, the 3DS was kind of one of the pioneers of expanding this technology to a mass audience. According to an Iwata Ass interview, most applications of AR at the time of the 3DS's development were in the form of static camera setups hooked up to computers. With the portability of a handheld system though, you can move the camera around easily, and the effect would be further enhanced by the 3D cameras. If you've kind of forgotten how AR games plays on the 3DS, let me remind you that they got quite a lot of mileage out of this tech. Every 3DS system comes packed with 6 AR cards, a question block card, and 5 character cards. It was originally planned to just be the one main card, but then Miyamoto looked at it and was like, isn't this a block from Mario? So why doesn't Mario come out of it? And the devs were like, uh, so here we are. We'll get to those in a moment though. Also, this is the mascot for AR games, a sentient block called Mr. AR. Nintendo was probably on a mascot high at that time, they made at least 3 new characters just for the 3DS itself. Anyway, scan the main card with the appropriate lighting and distance, and there he is. The menu is navigated just by shooting at objects. Now considering the 3DS's subpar camera quality, the AR tracking is passable but leaves a little to be desired. Since you'll be moving around the card quite a bit, any sudden or quick movements might cause the card to leave the frame, or cause the screen to stutter. It's not too bad though if you've got enough space and lighting for it to work as best as possible, though light reflecting off the card can also be a nuisance sometimes. At the start, you only have access to archery and star picks, and we'll do the latter first since it's pretty straightforward. Star Picks lets you post different characters around and take photos. The main card makes Mr. AR appear, but the other five cards show the corresponding characters. Mario, Toon Link, Kirby, Samus, and Pikmin. Can't believe these were from a time when Metroid and Pikmin were considered the other major Nintendo franchises. What, too soon? You can move the characters around independent of the card, change their size, and even strike different poses. More importantly, you can have multiple characters in the same shot. Even the devs mentioned that this had some mini Smash Brothers vibes in it. Ultimately, it's just a fun little photo tool that you can get some neat shots out of if you're creative enough. Just ask my lovely supporters on Patreon. On to the games, archery is probably the one everyone remembers. It's pretty straightforward, you got a bunch of targets and you shoot them, occasionally moving around to get a better view, like peeking into a hole. This time we also get to see some of the cool environment morphing techniques on display. But this really is more of a demo than anything, you only play two levels before resurrecting this dragon. 
and subsequently defeating it by shooting each of its segments while dodging its attacks that don't really do damage. I feel like this is one of the parts where the system struggles a bit trying to keep up with the camera feed, what with all the quick motions and explosions going around. But yeah, this is just a quick taste of what's to come. Completing Archery unlocks Mii Pix and AR Shot. Mii Pix is just Star Pix with Mii characters pretty self-explanatory, although this time you can change both the pose and expression of your Mii characters. Then we have AR Shot, which is like a miniature cross between golf and billiards. You have to hit a ball into a goal panel in multiple levels formed from the morphing environment. It's a neat minigame and all that, though sometimes the environment gets morphed so much to the point that it just looks like a blob of colors. And I don't really get the virtual stuff in real world feeling from it. Like you could probably turn all this into a full virtual environment without the AR elements and it would probably still be just as enjoyable. But that's just my two cents. Also, you can barely see the terrain when you play the game on a dark surface. It's still a fun minigame, and of course at the end, you fight another dragon by hitting bombs at it. Guess Nintendo's just got a thing for dragons while making this, huh? Moving on to the last two minigames, Graffiti and Fishing. Graffiti is a drawing tool, as you'd expect, though it does not actually let you draw in a 3D space. You just draw on a flat 2D plane and can then make your creation move all over the place. Though you can wrap the 2D plane into a sphere or a cylinder, so you can still make a ball jump around. It's got your typical brush and color options, some nice stamps, some overlays of Nintendo characters if you want to learn how to draw them, and even some effect brushes like sparkles, glowing lights, or setting everything on fire. And in typical Nintendo fashion, there are multiple animations for erasing the entire canvas. It's like tradition at this point, you know. Fishing is one of the quintessential Nintendo minigames, it seems like they can never go wrong with it whenever they put it in the game. This iteration in AR games actually reminds me a lot of the fishing minigame in Wii Play, only more realistic. You have two minutes to fish as many fish as possible, with bigger catches netting bigger scores as per usual. The use of motion controls is pretty seamless and works well here. You just dip the end of the rod in, wait till a fish bites, and then yank it up. It comes across really naturally. And of course, you get to see your catch up close in glorious 3D. After two minutes are up though, a large mysterious shadow appears in the water. What could possibly be lurking beneath the surface? You don't need to guess, it's a dragon again. Of course. Feed it some bombs with your fishing rod and uh... Wow, the game just asked you to fish its corpse up. That's kinda grim. Oh heck yeah, it's worth 200 points, let's go! And that is it for AR games. The archery and AR shot games feel a bit too short in my opinion, and oh what the heck, who am I kidding, of course that isn't it. Clearing Fishing actually unlocks this purple box that brings you to a whole second page of games. That you actually have to first buy from the shop using Playcoins, the 3DS system-wide in-game currency. Yeah, remember those? Honestly, it was a really great way to encourage gamers to exercise more by turning their steps while walking outdoors into hard-earned... Alright, got more than enough coins, so let's start from the top. Take Pictures just gives you the ability to take screenshots anyway by pressing L and R. Wow, kids these days are spoiled with their capture buttons and whatnot. Next up is Clock, and it's basically a virtual cuckoo clock. You can press A to make the cuckoo sound, and that's about it, I guess. Wait, control time? Wait, no, why would you do that? I'm not ready yet. I still have to like, finish this video. Well, it's time for another episode of Things of Interest, and this one is something that I have no words for- Wait, hold on, go back, I haven't even finished the last video yet, you think I wouldn't notice? Okay, we're back. Uh, anyway, I do like the 3D effect you get when you make the cuckoo pop out of the screen. You can even close in on it so that it breaks the screen when it pops out. <laughs> that's a pretty cute touch, I suppose. Alright, moving on, we have the globe. I think I already know what to expect from this one. Hold it in your hand. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah, I guess it is. 
I like this really calm atmosphere. It almost reminds me of looking at the Wii's weather channel. Just looking at the globe while listening to some relaxing music. Oh hey, you can actually shoot the earth to make it spin faster. <laughs> Look at it go, it's just going a wee. Sorry, I had to regain myself just there. Uh, what do we have next? The uh, 3D tools, right. This one finally puts the power of environment morphing in your own hands, with the ability to rise, lower, and flatten terrain around the card. Now this is pretty cool. And I was toying around with it and wondering how it would be pretty neat to include the ability to make custom AR shot levels, when I was reminded by the game that I could shoot out balls with the A button. I mean, it's not exactly a full gameplay feature, but it's better than nothing. You can make elaborate structures for the balls to roll in until their explosions inevitably cave your creation in. Alright, we're in the big leaks now. This is what I was excited to revisit for this video. The expanded versions of the base minigame, starting with free fishing and the fish gallery. Yup, this just lets you fish as long as you want without any time restrictions, which is freaking amazing. The weather and time of day can change as well, which affects what type of fish you can catch with 31 different species in total. There are even king-sized variants of each species to catch if you hate yourself. It's not much compared to the likes of Animal Crossing, obviously, but it's still a really fun time just chilling out and trying to catch as many species to fill your collection. Wait, hold on, is that a Lakitu? What's he doing here? Is he just gonna fish alongside? Oh, there are bloopers in the- Huh, that's really neat. Eat your heart out, Paper Mario. AR Games was 9 years ahead of you. And yes, there are special things to catch that appear under different scenarios. For example, a UFO occasionally floats across the water. And if you bonk it with your fishing rod, it falls into the water and becomes something you can catch. And here's something that's also super cool. If you place the AR car on a red surface, look at that. Cheap cheeps just start bouncing around for you to catch. And if you use a yellow surface, you can even save Mr. AR himself from drowning. No, don't, you have so much to live for, even though you get practically forgotten by Nintendo in the future and don't even cameo in Smash Brothers. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna spoil all of the fun catches in this mode to save some surprises, but if you haven't completed the fishing gallery yet, I recommend revisiting it sometime. I actually found out that I didn't complete it on my main system while writing the scripts, so I went ahead and did just that, and it was a fun time. Next up, Archery 2! No really, this is way more fleshed out than the first one. It has more levels for starters and has a few fun setups where you really have to look from all angles to get hidden targets, and on occasions actually shoot at them with accuracy. These moving targets are certainly something. I also like how this gate actually blocks you from shooting at the targets even if you try to look over it. Shoot the button? Hmm, okay. There's also this cute little part where you have to shoot a ghost into smaller pieces and stop them from reforming. Look at them! Stop, stop trying to make me feel bad! Oh well, you still get to fight a dragon at the end. It seems to be more aggressive than usual this time, but that might just be me. All that leaves AR Shot 2, the final minigame we're looking at, and naturally it's a harder version of AR Shot. Pretty hard actually, the whole minigame takes place in a dark environment with a glowing ball and it just makes it a tad more difficult to figure out the layout of the courses, especially when the terrain is constantly moving. Some levels like this one also get a bit frustrating trying to deal with the ball physics, like please just land on the ghost stop rolling off the slopes please? The levels this time around are more interesting for sure, though like the last time, it doesn't quite take advantage of the whole AR aspect as much as the archery minigames do, since you don't really have to look around from all angles to solve these. The dragon boss is also slightly on the annoying side, since you have multiple places to shoot bombs from, but the dragon constantly moves around and drops them so you gotta keep switching places all the while avoiding its attacks under the sweet frame rate. Overall though, it's decently challenging. And that is the whole AR games collection. Nintendo is no stranger to doing mini-game compilations for a system's launch. In fact, the whole concept of AR games started as an idea to give the 3DS an equivalent to Wii Play. And for a built-in game, they did a pretty good job of showcasing both augmented reality as well as the 3D camera technology. 
It's got a bunch of creative tools for some replayability, as well as one of the better fishing minigames to come from Nintendo. And since it's all portable, the AR cards were deliberately made credit card size to fit in wallets, it's like a tech demo for the 3DS you can easily show off to your friends. I certainly did carry the cards around with me back in the day and showed the games off once or twice. I probably became a walking 3DS advertisement and got played right into Nintendo's plans. I see you guys learning from the failure of the Virtual Boy. But of course, this fancy new AR technology wasn't just delegated to built-in software. Some actual 3DS games had to make use of them. And this is where support for it kind of faltered. Most people would probably look back on the AR feature thinking how very little games supported it. And yeah, only a handful of them did. There's the small list of supported games on Nintendo's website. Even though there are definitely more besides these and I don't think a comprehensive list of all of them has been compiled as of making this video. Some of the games don't really have impressive uses for the cards, like Nintendox Plus Cats, which lets you feel your pets on the card, okay? Well, you can use the character cards to give your pets some sick looking headgear, but that's about it. Still though, I want to talk about some of the highlights of AR features in 3DS games, as they definitely gave it lots of love on a few occasions and not everyone has heard of those efforts. First off, there are games that feature AR exclusive modes. Tetris Axis, one of the earliest Tetris games on the 3DS, features an AR marathon mode, which is just regular Tetris in AR with an incredibly tiny 4 row playfield, cause why not? And also AR Climber, a more fleshed out mode where you drop Tetraminos to help a little man climb to the top of a tower. That's clever enough I guess, since you have to keep moving around the card and all. Another game with AR modes is Mario Party Island Tour. Okay, controversial opinions on the board game design aside, this actually has mostly solid minigames, with some of them having great uses of motion control as well. So it makes sense for ND Cube to add in some extra minigames that take advantage of this fancy new AR tech. Oh, we only have two of them? Alright, it's better than nothing, and hey, D support multiplayer. You can let three other 3DS pals join in with download play, remember that feature, and all huddle and spin around the same AR card. I sadly don't have enough friends to replicate that chaos, but I'm sure it would certainly be one. Well, first off, we have Kagoomba, which is, uh, shooting Goombas. Pretty self-explanatory, that one. It does have this nice gimmick where you have to defeat a Womp at the end by shooting at its back while it keeps turning around. The other game is Sinking Feeling, where you climb to survive the longest on a tower that's constantly sinking into lava. Naturally, you have to move around the AR card in order to see all parts of the tower and keep up with your character. There's a single player endurance mode, but I imagine it would still be way more fun with friends. Skipping ahead a little, we have what is probably Nintendo's last major effort in pushing AR features on the 3DS. Starting from 2013, Nintendo released the Photos with Mario series. If you bought a Nintendo eShop prepaid card during this time, it would come with a special AR card featuring a Mario character. In Japan and Europe, the character you got depended on the value of the eShop card, but in America, they were all obtainable from $10 cards. As for the cards I actually got for myself, I only ever got two Goomba cards. Oh well. I just did the logical thing and printed the full set out myself. Even got them laminated. Don't know if that was a good idea in hindsight since it might affect readability, but whatever. Anyway, these cards are used with a free app on the 3DS eShop called Photos with Mario. It's sort of an evolution of star picks in the base AR games, but instead of static models, this time the characters are fully animated. They can react to the microphone, your distance towards them, and even interact with other characters. Place Mario next to Peach and they'll say hi to each other. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah. Swap her for a Goomba and Mario succumbs to his murderous instincts. It's fun to experiment with different character combos and see how they react to each other. You can even put in the question block card, which shows a pipe that can contain a toad or a piranha plant, depending on what character it's paired with. There are also some additional features, such as on-screen effects, this photo timer that has very cute countdown music, and a very neat grab function. With this, you can fix the character positions in place and transplant them to different places without the need to keep the cards on screen. You can even change the direction and color temperature of the lighting on the models to fit the surroundings. With all this, you could probably take some very neat shots. Now if you're not a Mario fan, don't worry, Nintendo has you covered, as they've released two other AR photo apps since then. Both of which didn't reach America. Sorry guys. The first is photos with Animal Crossing, because the Animal Crossing series needed more cards. Well, at least they got a chance to hop on the AR train after missing it the first time. 
In Japan, the three different cards were once again bundled with different values of eShop cards. In Europe though, the software and cards themselves were only provided through limited giveaways at Gamescom and McDonald's in 2015. And they asked other people who've joined online giveaways to just print their own cards. Yeah, that was a really weird year to be an Animal Crossing fan. Using this app is about the same as photos with Mario, only with an Animal Crossing theme this time. In fact, each of the three cards contains several characters, which can be swapped between by simply moving the camera away and back. The fun part that's unique to this version, however, is that the question block card shows the town tree from New Leaf plus Tournament, and when you put the different Animal Crossing cards next to it, the characters gather around the tree. So you can now take photos with the entire squad. Though for some reason, if you use the grab function, the town tree disappears, so it becomes a photo op with the squad plus a floating bug. Time for the other app, which is Photos with Pikmin. This is probably the most obscure one out of the trio, seeing as it was only released in Japan and through the eShop cards once again. This time you have three different types of Pikmin, red, blue, and yellow. You can even change the number of Pikmin by blowing on the mic. <laughs> like blowing the whistle in the Pikmin games, that's kinda clever. The gimmick that's unique to this version this time is that the Pikmin on the card have different animations depending on how you hold the card. If it's almost upside down, then oh look, he's hanging on for dear life. Uh, let me just... Boop! I feel very bad now. Alternatively, hold the card vertically and the Pikmin climbs up it and off to... Uh... Okay, to end things off, I've saved the best for last, and I'm gonna talk a bit about two retail 3DS games that actually came with their own AR material. First off is Spirit Camera, The Cursed Memoir, which is actually a spin-off of the Fatal Frame series. Now, I have no experience with the series, and I wasn't really gonna bother trying the game out for myself. But it was definitely worth mentioning in this video, as the game came with an entire AR booklet that was essential to playing the game. There's even a replacement PDF available on Nintendo's own website, but the game was never available digitally, so whoops. Anyway, the main gist is that you scan these pages with the 3DS camera and, uh, happy haunts materialize. So it's kind of like they tried to combine the tech of AR games and Face Raiders into one coherent game experience, where you scan the book to review ghosts and exorcise them by looking all around your room. While I admire the ambitious effort here, it seems that it still wasn't impressive enough to warrant a full 40 US dollar retail price, and was generally criticized for being too clunky to set up and being another glorified tech demo. If you want to learn more about it though, there's a really good video about it by Nitro Rad. I recommend checking that out. Now the other retail 3DS game that extensively uses AR cards is Kid Icarus Uprising. Now I know it's only one of the small side modes next to the amazing main game that more people should play but it still played a pretty big part in the game's promotion both before and after its release. Uprising has a library of collectible in-game models called Idols, basically the animated equivalent of Smash Bros. trophies because Sakurai. On their own, they're pretty neat to look at and serve as nice additional info and lore, but in addition to that, nearly all 400 plus Idols in the game have been released as collectible AR cards as well. Every physical copy of the game comes with six starter AR cards, including Pit and Palutena, as well as various side characters, enemies, and weapons. If you scan these with the 3DS camera, well, the associated idol just shows up like you'd expect. But if you make two cards face each other, then you can have them battle to the death. Each card has its own stats like health, attack, and speed as well. Alright folks, on this side of the ring we have Magnus, the mightiest human swordsman of all time! With his trusty giant sword that he wields in battles against the deadly forces of the underworld! And on the other side we have a literal child! Oh. Anyway, aside from the six cards you start with, additional cards could have been gotten from booster packs that were sold or distributed in events depending on where you live. Unfortunately, I'm in Hong Kong, so I'm just stuck with the base cards I started out with. But I absolutely dread the thought of anyone ever going for a complete collection of Kid Icarus AR cards, seeing as lots of rare cards were exclusively given out through different means all across the world. 
These included, but are not limited to, pre-order bonuses, cards being bundled with strategy guides, being bundled with the soundtrack, being bundled with magazines, given out as tournament prizes, Club Nintendo bonuses, and exclusively distributed at a single Japanese festival in Tokyo, I am not kidding, it is beyond ridiculous. There were even two cars that went unreleased physically in any region, with only one of them just recently posted digitally as part of a promotion for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, six whole years after the game came out. Can't wait until the fabled Medusa Rare car finally gets released to promote the sequel in 2037. Overall though, even with the support in a decent amount of other games, AR on the 3DS was mostly relegated to a side gimmick, and eventually faded out of the public eye as the years went on. While it was certainly fun for a gimmick, especially when combined with the stereoscopic 3D, it ultimately wasn't perfect and reliable enough to sustain a core game experience, what with the limited interactivity, terrible 3DS cameras and all. It's not like Nintendo didn't try at all with the concept, look at how much time I've spent just talking about the built-in minigames and the other games that took advantage of it. They even made this giant AR card as an offer for Club Nintendo members, and yes I did print my own, it was absolutely ridiculous. But in 2011, affordable and reliable consumer AR technology just wasn't really there yet. Though in stark contrast to 3D, which generally became a dying fat in the public eye as the years progressed, the 3DS definitely laid the foundation for what was to come for AR technology. After the 3DS, AR found a second life in smartphones, one of the most common portable devices we carry around. Instead of using large AR markers or cards, we could now use a combination of motion sensors, GPS, and even depth sensing cameras to map out environments in real time. In fact, as I was recording the script for this video, Nintendo reviewed Mario Kart Live Home Circuit for the Switch, which combines modern AR technology with physical toys to create a real-life Mario Kart experience. So in a way, this tech never really left their minds. And in addition to viewing AR images on a phone or tablet screen or whatever, you could just take a page from VR and make wearable AR displays. Okay, maybe trying to make them consumer devices didn't go so well, but there have been a lot of industrial applications for this type of mixed reality tech with extremely accurate tracking. I had the really lucky opportunity to try the Microsoft HoloLens 2 out for myself recently, as one of my family members got a hold of it on a loan, and it was like a revelation for me of how far this tech has come. With the use of what are essentially holographic displays, the virtual content can just appear in real life, and you can interact with it directly with your hands. You can draw in real-world 3D space and the doodle will stay at the exact same place no matter how and where you look at it, like that is kinda crazy to me. This simulated camera footage barely comes close to showing what it feels like to use this. While it will probably be a very long time before something like this is accessible on a consumer level, it's already seen some use in large sectors like education, architectural design, and industrial training. And even right now, consumer AR is still prevalent on smart devices. Apple in particular is really pushing the tech with their own devices currently. But seeing these great developments in augmented reality just makes me think back to how Nintendo was one of the first to try their hand at portable AR technology. Sure, it was a pretty cheap implementation of AR and wasn't really used for more than a handful of gimmick side modes, but in a way they pretty much predicted the potential of using this sort of technology on portable devices, which led to it being explored for lots of practical uses in addition to simple games. And with tech companies toying around further with AR and mixed reality headsets, I'm very intrigued in seeing if they'll eventually have some major impact on mainstream technology in the far future, when they become cheaper and more efficient to produce. At the very least, it could potentially be more appealing to a wider audience than virtual reality, seeing as the latter isn't always compatible with people who feel easily disoriented by it. But anyway, I feel that in this regard, the AR functionality of the 3DS could be seen as ahead of its time. It might not be a well-remembered aspect of the system nowadays compared to its game library and the other gimmicky main selling point, but if you've got some spare time and have some nostalgia for the early days of the system, maybe sit down with a pack of AR cards and go for a few rounds of fishing and archery sometime. Nearly 10 years into the 3DS's lifespan, the AR games definitely deserve a lot more love and appreciation, even if they weren't exactly perfect. Uh, I'm just gonna tack this little discovery I made onto the end here since I don't know where else to fit it in this video. So I found out that there was a demo version of AR games that was presumably available in kiosk demos and the like. And turns out this demo was distributed on a game card. 
So somewhere out there, there's a rare physical version of a piece of built-in software. Gives you something to think about.